Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one new husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet... The Challenge of the Yukon. Look, fella, I'm from Missouri. You gotta show me. Oh, so you're someone that thinks all breakfast cereals are pretty much alike, huh? Well, sir, here's a tip. Just you treat yourself to wheat or rice shot from guns. That's the original, the one and only Quaker puffed wheat... And Quaker puffed rice. These crisp, tender, king-size grains are premium grains shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. Pour out a bowl full, so crisp and fresh right from the package. Add milk and sugar, top with fruit, and start eating. Man, oh man, you'll say this is in a class by itself. Say, I'm sold. Tomorrow, sure, buy Quaker puffed wheat... And Quaker puffed rice. The first blizzard of the year caught Rick Farley when he was only halfway to Beaver City. He knew that he must travel light if he were to make it to the town, so he cached his gold dust and most of his supplies. Even so, the storm was nearly too much for him. His strength was gone, and he was still over a mile from town when he saw a light shining through the snowy darkness. A cabin. cabin. He staggered through the drifts and knocked on the door. Somebody come, please. Before it was opened, he dropped to the ground. Uh. Uncle Bill, come here. What is it, Rita? about done for. Bring him inside. Jake won't like that. He and Peter are asleep. We can't let the man freeze to death. Okay, Rita. Wait a minute. I'll put a blanket on the floor near the stove. Hurry up. He's heavy. Just a second. There. He's young, isn't he? Good looking, Sprout. Well, I got some brandy. That'll bring him around. What's going on out here? Nothing. Who's that tramp? We don't know. He knocked on the door, and when I opened it, he was lying in the snow. Haven't I warned you not to let any travelers inside this cabin? He can't do you any harm. Boy's almost dead, Jake. Uh, He might be a policeman. You can see for yourself. He's nothing but a miner. Uh, I wonder if he's got any dust. Uh, No poke of any kind. A tramp, like I said. Pete, come here. Huh? Get out of that bunk and come here. Uh, can a man get any sleep around this dump? What uh, are you going to do, Jake? I'm not going to do anything. Bill and Pete are going to take this galoot back to the trail and leave him there. No, I won't stand for it. You what? I won't. Why, it's murder. I'm still giving the orders around here. I'll go to the Northwest Mounted. Oh, you will. Don't you hit her, Jake. You'll stop me, I suppose. Yes, I will. Hey, Where'd he come from? The question is, where's he going? He's going to stay right here. Now, you listen to me. Now, be sensible, Jake. He'll be all right in the morning, and we can send him on his way. For if he's found dead anywhere near this cabin, you will have the police around. Yes, there's a lot in what she says, Jake. It isn't going to hurt you to let him stay the night. Yeah, we got no room. He can sleep on a pallet on the floor out here. Go on, Bill, get the brandy. Okay, Rita. Rick was forced to swallow a little brandy. And the color returned to his cheeks. But his exhaustion was too deep for him to revive, and he sank into a heavy sleep. Bill carried him to the cot and covered him with blankets. In his dreams, he relived the struggle on the trail. He started to talk, and the man and Rita listened. Get on the trail. 
Finally, he stopped. So, he has got some gold after all. He must have hit it when he got caught with the blizzard. Talk like that doesn't mean anything. We'll find out. How? Make him tell us. Make him show us where the gold is. Aren't you in enough trouble now? Yeah. And it's going to take money to get us out of it. Pete, you stay here and watch this buckle. <laughs> There's no chance of he's getting away. Watch him. And call me as soon as he wakes up. I'll watch him. All right, Rita. But you know I don't trust you anymore. Pete'll keep you company. <laughs> Both Rita and Pete settled down in chairs near the stove. Hours passed, and Pete started to nod. Soon he was fast asleep, his head sunk on his chest. Rita watched him closely for a few minutes. Then she rose from her chair and crossed the room to the cot. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Uh, who are you? It doesn't matter who I am. You've got to get out of here. Well, I think I'm dreaming. You're the prettiest girl I ever saw in my life. Will you listen to what I'm saying? Your life's in danger. Oh, I feel fine. I never felt better. Then you won't have any trouble making it into Beaver City. It isn't much more than a mile. I'll give you a pair of snowshoes and you can start right away. Oh, no. What's your name? I... I'm not going to tell you my name. Then I won't leave. Keep your voice down. Listen, you've been talking in your sleep about some gold you cashed on the trail. I've got plenty of gold. I, I figure it's about time I got married. Be serious. I am. You can see that man over by the stove. There are two more in the other room. One of them's all right, the other one isn't. He's going to make you show him where your gold is. And after that, I think he'll kill you. He's a crook? Yes. What's a girl like you doing mixed up with a crook? That's a long story, and it doesn't matter. Why are you looking at me like that? How? As if you were sorry for me. Uh, you're so young. <laughs> Look who's talking. Please, will you get out of here? Not unless you come with me. Oh, you're crazy. Maybe. But I mean it. Just now, just for a second, there was something like hope in your eyes. You don't want to stay here, do you? That has nothing to do with you. It's settled. But you don't understand. I have no friends anywhere. There's no place where I can go. You've got one friend, me. My name's Rick Farley. What's yours? Rita O'Day. But I can't leave here with you. They'd come after us. Rick. Oh, they won't catch us. I promise you that. And I know where you can stay. Where? Mrs. Carson's in Beaver City. Come on. I... All right. I will. Let's go. Please be quiet. If you wait, Pete will never get away. I don't know what'll happen. Here, I'll help you with your parka. The snowshoes. <laughs> Got them. The door squeaks sometimes. Be careful. Right. Rick and Rita slipped out of the cabin. The storm was over, but the snow was drifted and deep. And even with the help of snowshoes, it was hard going. Dawn was breaking as they entered the town, and Rick led the way to Mrs. Carson's boarding house. She was an old friend, and as she prepared breakfast for the girl and boy, Rita told her something of her story. It was last July that Dad died, mm -hmm. Mrs. Carson. That was down in Whitehorse. Bill Manson was his partner. I'd always called him Uncle Bill. He isn't really. You said he was all right. I think so. Except, well, he's had a lot of hard luck. He needed money badly when he met Jake and Pete. Are they wanted by the law, Rita? Something happened in Whitehorse. All I know is that Bill woke me up late one night and said that we had to leave town. The four of us came up here. Oh, um, Sergeant Preston's due to arrive in Beaver City today. I think you'd better have a talk with him, Rita. No. For your own protection. Bill's been kind to me. I don't want to get him into any trouble. Well, I can understand that. But the other two, you're afraid of them, Rita. And you probably have a good reason. I, I only want to forget them. Well, you're perfectly welcome to make your home here with me. You'll be a great help. Oh, that's swell. It's wonderful. Only, only if they find out where I am, they won't. I... And nobody's going to hurt you. Oh, I'm not afraid for myself. But they'll be looking for you. Huh? 
Oh, I can take care of myself. They need money badly, and your gold They won't is... find that. As soon as we eat, I'm going to hire a dog team and go and get it. The trail passes so close to the cabin, they'll see you. I can take another trail. Be careful. That's all I ask. Don't worry. Come on, let's eat. Mrs. Carson said nothing more to Rita about Sergeant Preston, but she was determined to have a talk with him. And she was waiting at the general store when he drove into town that morning. Hello there, Sergeant. I'm glad to see you. Hello, Mrs. Carson. Hello, King. I've got some business with you, Sergeant. But let's get out of the cold, shall we? By all means. Uh, hello, Sergeant. Hello, Josh. What's, what's the news in Dawson? Now, well, you can I... just wait to find that out, Josh. I've got to tell you about these men, Sergeant. What men? They're living in the woods about a mile outside of town. And I think they're crooks. Crooks? Why do you think that? Well, there's a girl named Rita Day staying at my place now. She's a sweet young thing. Just Mrs. Carson told the sergeant of Rick and Rita's escape from the cabin in the woods and all that Rita had told her of the men who lived there. Now, this Bill Manson has evidently watched out for Rita ever since her father died. But even so, if they're crooks and they were certainly planning to steal Rick's gold, I figure you should do a little investigating. I agree with you. Could you give me a description of them? No, but maybe Josh has seen them. Josh, have you ever seen anything of three men that live in the woods outside of town? Uh, where? In that old trapper's cabin. I don't think so, Miss Carson. They never bought anything here. Perhaps I'd better have a talk with the girl. Well... Now, now, wait a minute. I did see a couple of strangers this morning when I was opening up the store. You did? They were heading down the street towards your place. Oh, land sakes, could they have followed Rick and Rita? I'd better have a talk with the girl. That's right, Sergeant. No matter what she thinks about it. You come along with me. All right, King. Let's go, boy. A few minutes later, the sergeant and Mrs. Carson were climbing the steps of her boarding house. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have left Rita alone. If they know where she is... But... How long have you been gone? It's been over an hour. I wanted to catch you the minute you got into town. I see. Oh, Rita. She was in the kitchen when I left. No one here... Well, her bedroom room is the one in front. Maybe she's asleep. I'll take a look. No? What's that King's got? A scarf. It's hers. But where's her parka? See those tracks on the floor? They were made by a man, a big man. Oh, Sergeant. They've been here and they've found it. Yes, I'll keep the scarf. Let's go, King. We have work to do. <laughs> We'll continue our story in just a moment. You know, fellas and girls, it's getting mighty chilly some of these mornings, and I was thinking that... Say, as a matter of fact, it's getting chilly in here right now, but fast. Good heavens, look who just blew in. Golly, he's a sprightly-looking little fellow, with pointed cap and shoes and... Say, you wouldn't be Jack Frost, would you? That's me, Jack Frost, in person. Oh, so you're the fellow that paints the frost on windows, huh? Right. Now, ask me what I'm doing here. Well, I am curious. Had an idea about Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice. Oh, you're interested in the breakfast cereal shot from guns? You bet I am. I eat a big bowlful every morning, winter, summer, the year round. Say, Jack, you must go for wheat or rice shot from guns. Nothing better. Good for you, too, especially for a busy fellow like me. You mean because Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are nourishing and furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Right. Say, uh, what was that idea of yours? Oh, it's simple. On cold mornings, boys and girls might ask Mom to pop their Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice into the oven and uh, heat just for a jiffy. Oh. And then maybe pour on some hot milk. Say, that's a real easy-to-fix warmer upper breakfast treat. And different. And good. Well, gotta go now. Lots of work to do these days. So long. Goodbye, and thanks, Jack Frost, for the swell breakfast idea. And fellas and girls, just try it real soon on a chilly morning. And don't forget... Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. Yes, these king-size premium grains are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. 
Ask Mom right now to order Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Wheat or rice shot from guns come only in big red and blue packages. Look for the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the original, the one and only, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now to continue our story. As Sergeant Preston and King left Mrs. Carson's boarding house, Pete and Rita were nearing the cabin in the woods. Come on, fast. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> You're going to get a big surprise in a minute. It won't do you any good bringing me back here. I'll only run away again. Inside. Rita. Freak. How does he look to you now, Rita? <laughs> you beaten him up and when his hands were tied. You're rotten, all of you. Bill, how could you have let them do such a thing? We're we're in a tough spot, Rita. You, you're just as bad as they are. No, the rough stuff was Jake's idea. What happened, Rick? How did they catch you? They were waiting for me outside of town. Got the drop on me. You didn't think you could get away so easy, did you, Rita? After that snow we had last night, all we had to do was follow your tracks. What have they been trying to do, Rick? Make you tell them where your gold is? That's exactly right. So far, he hasn't felt like talking. But from the way he looks at you, I've got an idea things are going to be different now. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to save her life, Farley, you'll tell us where you hid your dust. Now, how about it? All right. No, don't pay any attention to them, Rick. They wouldn't dare. They're just a pack of cowards. Does this look like we wouldn't dare? Keep away from her with that knife. Where's the gold? I'll have to show you. All right. Bill, get his team around in front. Bill, you're not going through with this. We've got to. You won't be hurt, and you've got some friends now. You make out all right. The three of us are heading for the border. Hurry up. Okay. Untie his feet, Pete. Yeah. He's in no condition to hit the trail. Here, yeah, ride the sled. You're healthy. You can walk. Why does she have to come with us? Why can't you let her go back to Mrs. Carson's? Later, Farley. When we're over the border. Hey, Jake, these dogs are acting up. I think somebody's heading this way. Hurry up, Pete. Get Farley on his feet. There. Get up. Now march with you. I got you covered. And don't try any funny business. Rick was helped out of the cabin to the sled. The others put on snowshoes, and a few minutes later it disappeared in the forest heading north. King was leading the sergeant's team toward the cabin. The trail was an easy one to follow, and they had made good time from town. But at the edge of the clearing, the sergeant stepped on the brake. Oh there. Oh your husband. Easy, King. Keep the team quiet, boy. He and King circled the clearing to the side of the cabin that had no windows before they left the cover of the trees. Then they closed in. Keeping low, the sergeant rounded the corner of the cabin and ran to the door. With his gun ready, he opened it. Ah, nobody here, boy. What'd you find, first trail? Yes, I see the sled tracks now. And people on snowshoes. Three of them, King. I think I'd better use snowshoes myself. Come on, boy. Back to the sled. Leaving the team behind, the sergeant and King started out. King knew that the people they were following were only a little way ahead. And less than half a mile from the cabin, he stopped and looked up into his master's face. Close, boy. I hear their team. Come on. But King refused to move. There were men ahead, it was true. But there was also a man to the right of the trail and another to the left. And they were moving toward the sergeant. King caught the ominous glint of metal through the trees, and he jumped against his master. <laughs> Preston dropped to the ground as a shot rang out. I see him, boy. The sergeant raised himself slightly to fire at the man to the left of the trail. Then a rifle spoke from the right. Oh! oh I'd better find more cover. The sergeant was hit, but he crawled into a gully at the side of the trail. It isn't too bad, boy. Won't interfere with my shooting anyway. The men among the trees showed themselves for the barest second, and they fired, and the sergeant missed his target several times. Then, one of his shots hit the man at the left. Oh! Scores even anyway, King, but I didn't get the one who hit me. And there was no further opportunity. There was no more firing. The man had gone. King told his master that by scrambling from the gully to stand in full view on the trail. 
The sergeant didn't follow him. I'm sorry, boy, I can't make it. I can't even reach my first aid kit. <laughs> Try, though. Try. King, I dropped it. Fetch, boy. Good dog. Thanks. I'm going to try and get this parka off. King, here, pull. Pull it back. That's it. I have to unbutton my jacket. Good thing my right arm still works. There. I'll rip the shirt. Don't worry, King. I'm not giving up. Just resting a little. I'll get the case open. Now the antiseptic. Oh! Now, oh, bandage. It's hard to get it around, King. Gotta make it, though. It's the only way to stop it from... Gotta get it around. Tight. Tighter. Did it, King. Afraid I can't walk, though, boy. Got the team. That's right. Got the team. Go on, King. As King raced off down the trail... Pete rejoined Jake and Rick and Rita half a mile to the north. Well, who was it? It was a big guy. From the dog he had with him, my guess is it was Preston. Sergeant Preston? Did you get him? I hit him. He won't be following us anymore. Did you finish him off? I don't know. Why don't you? Because he could still shoot even if he was hit. And he took cover in a gully. If I'd showed myself, I wouldn't be here to talk about it. So he's only wounded. He may be dead now. Yeah, where's Bill? I thought he'd be here. I... I heard him take off. Here he comes. He's wounded, too. All right, what happened to you? What's it look like? I stopped a bullet, caught one in the arm. A couple of bunglers. I'd like to put you up against Preston someday and see how you like it. So it was him. Yeah. He may still be coming after us. I don't think so. He was hurt bad. The best thing for us to do is keep moving. Okay. And Pete, you stay 100 yards in back of us. Why? Just in case, mister. If you see any sign of Preston, shoot to kill. (laughs) I must. Must you marry him? As the sergeant waited for King, he felt his strength returning. He put it to the test. He found that he was able to climb out of the gully. He rested beside the trail then. King came charging toward him, the team and sled behind him. The great dog tried to lick his master's face. Yes, boy, I'm feeling better, but never mind that. Hang on to you, I can make it to the sled. That's it. Stand steady, boy. All right. There. Up front, boy. We're going on, King. We're going after them. Up front. On, King! On, you huskies! The early dusk of the Northland was falling over the trail when Rick told Jake to stop his team. This is it. Oh, hold that. Oh. Where? I'll show you. But you'll have to help me up. Don't go through with it, Rick. Rita, we haven't any choice. It's a good thing you've got some sense. All right, up you go. Here. Lean on me. Bill, can you see Pete? Yeah, down the trail. He's coming. All right, mister. Where's that goal? This way. It's right near the spring. There's a big rock. I just wrapped my supplies in the dust in a piece of tarpaulin. Of course, they must be covered with snow now, but I can find the place. Hey, there's the spring. Is that the rock you mean? Yes. Go ahead, take it. Keep them covered, Bill, while I clear away the snow. I'm sorry, Rita. Don't talk to me. Yeah. It's here. I've got it. Hey, this poke is plenty heavy. Full summer's work. The heft I'd say was close to $5,000. Now you're going to let Rita and me go? <laughs> What's so funny? The idea of letting you go. We got to make sure you stay right here for a while. There's only one way I can think of to do that. What? What are you talking about? What? We can't let them go back to Beaver City. You must have realized that from the beginning, Bill. I think I did. Well, I didn't. I may be all kinds of a skunk, but I don't kill anybody in cold blood. And you're not either, Jake. What? I've got you covered. Even shoot with my left hand, I couldn't miss from here. Why, you... Rita, untie those ropes around Farley's wrists. All right. Don't make a move, Jake. We're going through with our bargain. Back on the trail, King had warned the sergeant that Pete was only a short distance ahead of them. And the Mountie had stopped the team. He was strong enough to walk now, only occasionally leaning on King for support. And he took to the trees at the side of the trail. Now he could see Pete. He was standing still. The sergeant hurried on, and finally through the trees he could see Jake, Bill, Rick, and Rita. He could see Bill holding a gun on Jake. And then as King growled, he looked at Pete once more. 
Pete had raised his gun and was about to shoot them. This is one time, King. We shoot first. Cut him, King. Come on. The sergeant and King moved on toward the group near the frozen spring. Pete had sunk to his knees, clutching his side. Bill still held a gun on Jake. Rick recognized the sergeant. Keep back, sergeant. Don't show yourself. We're a bunch of killers. That doesn't go for me, and I don't shoot at the man who just saved my life. Come on, sergeant. I'll just hold a gun on this coyote until you take over. I'll do that right now. Okay. Give me your gun. Here you are. So they had you a prisoner as well as the girl, eh, Rick? Uh, they wanted my dust. Jake here's got it now. I see. I recognize these three. You do? How? From their descriptions. They broke into the express office at Whitehorse, but they only managed to get away with something like $100. Now it looks to me as if the charge would be attempted murder. But not Bill, Sergeant. Well, perhaps not, if this one is Bill. You were shooting at me from the left of the trail, weren't you? How did you know that? I know where I hit you, in the arm. And you weren't trying to hit me, were you? I... No, I wasn't. Sergeant, Jake made him go back there. And it was Jake who was going to kill Rita and me. He would have if Bill hadn't stopped him. Oh, I didn't do much good. I didn't see Pete. He'd have plugged me if it hadn't been for you, Sergeant. Well, we'll bandage Pete up and take him back to town. All three of you are under arrest, but the charge against you, Bill, will only be robbery. I'm ready to face it now. Rita, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. I, I forgive you. No, I'm almost glad it happened this way. I know Rick will watch out for you. I sure will. You'll be happy now, Rita. <laughs> Looks to me, King, as if the case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's program. Say, if you can't make up your mind which you like best, Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice, here's what you do. Don't miss out on either kind of these delicious, ready-to-serve cereals. Always keep a supply of both kinds on hand. Eat Quaker puffed wheat one time, Quaker puffed rice the next. Wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Be sure to look for the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That's the only way to get the original, crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of Marlowe's Gang. When Inspector Martin sent King and me to Dawson to hunt for the Marlowe Gang, I realized we were up against a gang of ruthless and clever killers. They managed to avoid a trap I laid for them, with the result that Roy Miller, a fellow officer, faced death. Believe me, when King and I found the gang, we had a fight on our hands. Be sure to hear this exciting story Wednesday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one...